Hi, Hi guys. guys. Welcome back to the Sitting Down with the Sisters <laughs> podcast. It's been a long time since you said that. It really has. We it are your hosts. It's yeah. been a month. I'm Ayo. I'm Ashley. I'm Temi. Hello. Hi guys. It's How been a long you? time. It's Actually, really to be fair, my name's not Temi anymore. Mm. It's Tamika because I'm not Nigerian. Wow. Whoa. Okay. Oh. I'm, so just yeah, from that I'm alone, joking, I'm you joking, can kind of get the gist of what we're I'm just really sad today. right now. Yeah, yeah but let's sad. actually address how long we've been away. We've been away for like basically a month at this point. Yeah. And shout out to all of you lot that have been asking us where we've been. Mm-hmm. It's been rough. Both of my babies here have been sick at points. And yeah. then we also had a little bit oh, of yeah. a break. It was a so, it was a lot. Like it I wasn't like just I, like we wasn't posting. We actually everything just happened all around the same time. Yeah. And yeah, it's just, yeah, we've just tried to go with just, just so. Sorry, guys. What a bush girl. <laughs> Hell! Anyway. And like Ayo said as well, thank you to those who actually went out of their way to ask us, you know, where's the new episode? Because I'm sure some people probably thought that, you know, we lost the studio. And. <laughs> <laughs> this girl. She cannot help herself. <laughs> you know those people, yeah? Stop wishing bad on others. That's, That's what I'm going to tell you. Every wow. tongue, every tongue that rises up against child fall. How can you rise against a child of God? Hello? Oh, hallelujah. Well. Speak, the, oh, speak it. Of God. How can you think we've lost the studio? Anyways, hmm. <clears throat> maybe she felt that one in her spirit. That's why she had to let you guys know. Yeah, I just felt like I had to say that one. But obviously, yeah. again, thank you to those who've been supporting from the very beginning before we even were in the studio. Mm. And now, yeah, again, so and shout studios, out to Benga every single time. Period. So box studios with two x's we started the two x's if you didn't know Mm -hmm. and shout out to joe behind the camera camera. joe um he's got a podcast too Mm -hmm. real real soulful podcast i like that name Mm -hmm. um black excellence yeah i'll be looking forward to seeing him on our podcast one day yay also later. this girl oh my you can tell we're excited to be back we're very excited to be back but the way the way was mm, yeah anyways also follow us on instagram and Mm -hmm. twitter sdwts podcast correct right so straight into it now as you heard temi at the beginning you heard her say she's tamika now because she's non-nigerian which is mm. a joke obviously yeah, it's a joke. um it's a but weaker. but i'm very disappointed it's rooted, yeah it's rooted in the fact that obviously as you know there's been a lot of passer mm-hmm. is that i don't know Wahala. i don't know if that's even the word passer, how would you say it's just there's been a lot going on like yeah. it's just been there's just been a I don't know. Is it a problem? There's an issue. There's just been loads of different things mm-hmm. happening all around the same time. But let's not act like this is something that has yeah, just started. Exactly. You know, not just with Nigeria, but just Africa as a whole. Like a, a lot of countries are going through different issues at the moment. Mm-hmm. But these things have been going on for quite a while. You know, um, <coughs> we were literally saying before, thank God for social media that's been able to amplify everything that's been going on. Oh, um, for example, the um, NSARS movement i don't know if you guys saw it yeah but people were bringing up old tweets from 2017 yeah, it's been a 2015 thing. when they were protesting it's about been a, SARS. it's been a thing like i think for a lot of people that aren't nigerian you wouldn't know what sars is until now because of how big it's gotten but sars has been around since 1992 yeah. and it stands for special anti-robbery, anti-robbery squad yeah. mm-hmm. and they're, be- they're basically meant to be like a separate unit well not separate like a like a little like a like secondary a sex, unit yeah, to the police like, yeah, unit yeah. for armed robbery because yeah. if you know nigeria armed robbery is basically the meal of the day Imagine. it happens all the time yes so the reason that it's nsars is because that unit that's meant to be against robbery have been the ones robbing killing kidnapping raping doing they've been all manner the, of things they've been targeting everyone but especially the, the youth mm-hmm. and they will target people that look like young with like iphones laptops dreads dreads, um, anything they they see as like you need money to look this way um yeah so yeah like it's been it's been a mess to be quite frank with you it's been a whole ass mess Mm. and we wanted to come and talk about it because obviously as nigerians and ashley's not nigerian as you guys know Mm -hmm. but we're gonna because we're not only talking about nsars today we're talking about africa the fact that africa is bleeding because africa really and truly is crying right now there's too much going on it's screaming Hmm. and um first of all actually we wanted to say um our thoughts our prayers our loves is going out to all the people 
and the families of those who have lost, lost people due to the things going on right now because mm-hmm. it's actually been so hard to be mm. on social media right now like it's been so heavy mm. and we just want to let you guys know that our thoughts and our prayers are with every single one of Honestly. them but yeah guys how, what's, what has been your thoughts on everything yeah i was about on? to actually i was about to ask you two because obviously um both of you guys are nigerian and i'm congolese mm. yeah um so i wanted to ask you two how do you like how are you feeling like obviously i feel it as well because at the end of the day africa is africa we're brothers and sisters yeah i see I africa mean, as one we, we're neighbors we're, all we have yeah bring i it. mean like if you're we're gonna eat it in the pod <laughs> So you can bring it. <laughs> Come through. Do you Thank want to you. say hi, Benka, to the team? <laughs> it would be naive of me to say that you guys are f- not feeling it differently. Mm-hmm. You know, because you're actually Nigerian. Like, that's your motherland. So how are you guys feeling? Do you know? Everything that's going on. Can I say something? Mm. With me, it hits a little bit different. The reason I say that is because I was born and raised in right. Nigeria. Right. Mm-hmm. I came to... England when I was really young but I still remember parts of the country like I remember growing up there I remember where I lived and everything like I remember my family house and everything and I saw someone tweet something they literally said that um the diaspora like people that are here in the UK that are Nigerians or Africans that our parents have decided to migrate here to the UK if they just hadn't done that we would have been on the streets with them Mm -hmm. That's why it hits a little bit different. Me and my brother were having a discussion about it because we were both born there. It's just like, what would we have been doing? Mm. There's no way we sit at home. Mm. Do you know what I mean? If we never even, God forbid, if they didn't even, if SARS hadn't even killed any of us, we would be out there protesting. Yeah, no, you would have been. Do you know what I mean? This iPhone, my dad was telling me, this iPhone, I'm going on the streets in Nigeria, I've got this in my hand. They would absolutely stop me. Mm Do you know what I mean? It's like, where's this from? Where did you get it from? You know, they basically because, hold you ransom, like yeah. for, in the streets. For what? I haven't. I'm not. I'm not a criminal. Mm. I have an iPhone because you know you work hard for your money. Mm-hmm. That's how you get it. I don't mm-hmm. take it off anybody, mm-hmm. and they know that as well. But because they're underpaid, they don't have the phone you have. Mm. They don't dress the way you do, mm-hmm. so it's a problem. And they have that mm. respect. What's that thing? Superiority, superior, superiority complex mm-hmm. where. Mm-hmm. Because, because you're I'm older than you. Absolutely. I can talk to you anyhow. That's, that's why a they target the youth. Yeah, that's a big thing in Africa. That's a whole other, other topic, topic. But, um, <laughs> by itself. For me, I was born here, raised here. Right. Very in touch with my Nigerian. Mm-hmm. Yes. Been like that. Because when the way I grew up here, yeah, I would I I don't really like calling myself British Tudor. I like to say I'm Nigerian because when I was in my house I was Nigerian. Period. My parents are Nigerian, my family is Nigerian, everybody that I love like people that I love live in Nigeria. And so to know that it's affecting them, because it's deeper than SARS. I hope mm. you guys know yeah. that too. I think what we need to make clear is that people are protesting against SARS because they're tired of being killed. Can you imagine? Mm. They're not protesting because they don't have 24-hour light. They're not protesting because their water is trash. Mm-hmm. They're not protesting because they have rubbish health care. They're protesting because they don't want to get killed. Basic human rights. Do you get what I'm saying? So you have to see how desperate of a situation it is that they're having to protest this. They should be protesting stuff like they don't have light. Mm. They should be protesting that they don't have water. How are they even going to be able to do that if they can't live? Do you get what Imagine. I'm saying? Like it's because this is getting out of hand that they have to now protest hmm. because they they've acu- they've become accustomed to poverty now at this point. Hmm. They're so accustomed to it. in Nigeria. It's just normal to manage. It's normal right. to survive, not to live hmm. to survive. Just to get by. Do you know what I'm saying? Where hmm. You're used to getting your money taken from you by the police. You're used to paying people off for doing stuff. Basic Honestly, things that they should be doing, you're paying people, people off. people that should be protecting you. That's why it's so ironic. Yeah. Because the law is in your hands. And the reason why it's in your hands is so you can protect me from other people that are trying to attack me. But, but then you're, you're abusing the one doing, and so exploiting your where power. Where are these people? Where are these um, these Niger? Where are they supposed to go? Mm-hmm. Do you know what? Um, obviously, because I didn't. I'll be completely honest. I'm, there's no point lying. I didn't know what exactly, like who exactly SARS was. Yeah, and that's fine. And I had a lot of my friends that were Nigerian asking. You wouldn't me. know if you're and not it wasn't, you didn't. Yeah. And it wasn't until I saw um, there was this man with his family in church. I think you've seen the video. I this saw was the video in actually. 2016 or 17. 
and it obviously resurfaced <sighs> in light of everything. And he was basically just giving like his testimony almost of how he had like the I think issue he was that he encountered. In a wheelchair or he was sitting down or something. Um, his part of his jaw, like, did you was see? Dis- it? Was part of his jaw oh was dismantled. So basically, he was on his way home from church with his family, with his three kids, a newborn baby, and his wife. Um, these like SARS people, whatever, they approached him and they said, "Oh, where are you coming from? Like, who are you?" Mm-hmm, da, 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 mm-hmm, they had mm-hmm. guns. They were pointing guns to his head. They and then he said, "Next thing he knows, gunshots went off. A gunshot hit his jaw, and you can see like he's still mm-hmm, having to mm-hmm. like basically. I think there's like a, there's like a, a bandage thing yes, holding that's it. holding mm-hmm, his jaw. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and he thought everything was okay. Like he's holding his like he's with his children. He's holding his jaw. Blood is gushing out. Mm-hmm. He's running to the bus so that they can escape." Mm-hmm. It wasn't, he said, it wasn't until he heard his children saying, mommy's mommy, dying, mommy's dying, mommy's dying. He turned around and he saw that they had shot his wife. Mm-hmm. In, in her back. In her, no, the sh- there was a gunshot through her skull. Her oh, head, yes. Her brain. yes, 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 yes. She was holding a newborn baby. The baby's on the floor. What? The wife, his wife is ta- dead. Had they taken them out of the car? What they, happened was they were on like what happened was they were in the car. It's called um you know those um bikes, yeah, not the Kada. bike, but they're called Keke Monwa oh, yeah. or something like that. That's it. That's what he said. They got them out of it. Mm-hmm. They already spoke to the police officers. They said they don't have any money. Another police officer came over and was like, "Let them go," kind of thing. So they already went. So they they're back in the car now. Yeah. When they then got back in the car, right before he moved off, that's when they shot at them. Mm-hmm. So his wife has is dead. His in the car died. and Sorry, the baby's yeah. on the floor his wife died his baby his newborn baby is on the floor as mm. in she just had the baby and what were they terrorizing them for nothing, nothing. because they didn't give them money mm-hmm. there was no bribe he said i'm coming from church i don't have any money and that's what i want people to understand because obviously say for example someone who isn't nigerian or someone who has who is an african period they're seeing um all this like this the sars everything and they're thinking oh who are they like how are they exploiting their power that's, That's an, a great example. Imagine like just being out in Brixton or Croydon or whoever and then you have police approach you and asking you for they're money asking you, because where, who are you? you? Where are you from? How what did you, you get that iPhone? Who do you work for? Why do you have dreads? Blah, 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 blah. Exactly. Why are you dressed like that? Where are you coming from? Da, 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 da. And then instead of letting you go, they're harassing you. They hurt you physically. X, Y, and Z. You know they some of them people as well. Some like, of them take w- people to the bank and tell them to empty out their bank account. Mm-hmm. They literally would threaten people and tell them that if you don't give us money... We will kill you and no one will find your dead body. Yeah, mm-hmm. because they also hide people's bodies. They yeah. pour acid on people's bodies to make them unrecognisable. They do what a whole What kind of lot. monsters? Do you know there was a story and this of is how all there was a family... happening with the government being aware of it, just to let everybody know. There was a family, um, she didn't know her brother was missing. Mm-hmm. No, she knew her, she knew her brother was missing. Mm-hmm. She didn't know he was dead until his body was found recently. Because they had buried his body. Hmm. So that's just to give you a background as to what's been going on in Nigeria for a very long time. But we actually need to step in here and talk about something that's going to go down in history that happened a couple of days ago. The 20th On the October. 20th of October. <laughs> there was a massacre that happened at Lekki Tollgate. And talking about it right now, I don't even know, like I actually don't know how to talk about it because before I remember, you, yeah. Sorry, before you go into it, can you explain what you know, like Lekki Toll Gate yeah, is? So basically, oh yeah, no. oh, sorry. Obviously. Like where is it? Like yeah. what exactly So Lekki is? is a like a very nice area in Lagos. Mm-hmm. Um, there's part of it that's on the island and there's some of it that's not on the island. No, wait, some of it is on the mainland, sorry, and some of it is on an island. Right. Lekki Toll Gate is this gate that when you're traveling from basically Lagos into Lekki, you have to go through and pay to get into Lekki because it's more it than it is um, Tinubu. Yeah. So it's a very like, Lekki is like, I guess the Chelsea, like it's an example of like the Chelsea and Kensington's of the of London. Right. There's nicer areas, there's Banana Island, places like that, but Lekki right. is also a, a place that people that are quite well to do live, right? Yeah. So that's to give you, just give you a brief background into what Lekki Tollgate is. Right. So on the 20th of October, our government, I don't even want to call them my government because you don't care about me. Cowards. Um, that government decided to impose a curfew on the same day that they wanted it executed and four gave people before. four hours notice to get home. If you and, know, and they announced it on Twitter. If you know anything about Lagos, to get home in Lagos period but specifically at certain times you can be in the same standstill traffic for hours basically if you wanted to get home um for that time you'd had to have you'd have to have left as soon as it was announced on twitter someone made a good point a woman that hasn't got twitter that just has a little shop 
in I don't know one of the places in Lagos somewhere in Lagos how is she supposed to see that and pack up her stock and go home that is so cowardly the fact that you can't even address your nation they then decided to extend it like from four to, to nine. nine but before that they had already started doing very shifty stuff i.e removing cctv mm. at the toll gate switching off the lights at the toll gate and then all of a sudden it became dark roughly around 7 mm-hmm. pm mm-hmm. soldiers came army shooting. the army yeah fired gunshots innocent civilians protesters i need you guys to know yeah because i i hate re- respectability politics about oh these people were not carrying arms not, i Wait, don't hold on i don't know if you guys heard what we no, said but hold on from 12 mm-hmm. like did you did you guys take in the time frame of how we've just that's literally 12 o'clock it was announced i was going to let me just quick yeah no go 12 ahead. o'clock there was going to be a curfew mm-hmm. it was announced that the curfew was going to start at four. four that same day yeah 4 p.m. came, people were still at the toll gate protesting, standing there, all of that. Oh, actually, the billboard at the toll gate literally randomly went off, and that's never happened before. That happened. Two men came to then disconnect the CCTV and take it down. That's when little shifty things started happening. They extended the curfew till nine. Roughly around seven o'clock, the army came and started shooting at innocent people with their flags so what does it mean even hit the curve what does it even mean when you have a flag doesn't that mean i surrender you got a flag legally in nigeria when you're holding a nigerian flag you're not allowed to shoot at a person that's not even just in nigeria that's in that's That's in most countries that's in a lot that's everywhere but i'm just saying because we're talking about nigeria legally Uh nigeria when you're holding a flag they're not allowed to shoot at you oh wow i didn't know that it but means peace. Yeah. Like you're surrendering. I'm surrendering. It's even patriotism. Oh, it like even even, even patriotism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just patriotism. Normal stuff. You shouldn't shoot at somebody holding the flag. Right. Yeah. So okay, now, yeah. as that's going on, right, the only people talking about it are social media people. People on social media. It's not on the news. It's not anywhere. And why Why do you think that is, people? Because it was a premeditated, pre-planned attack. attack. Mm-hmm. And there was a very viral, um, a very viral image that came out of that massacre, mm-hmm. and it's it's now called the Lekki Tollgate massacre. Just mm-hmm. so, you, if you want to do your own research, mm-hmm, you can, mm-hmm. because there was a man that was shot, and in in being shot, the white part of the Nigerian flag, if you know the Nigerian flag, it green, white, red. green, turned red, and that image has the symbolism of that image. I don't think I can ever forget it. I don't mm. know if I, I don't know if I want to accept Instagram's apology for that actually because they've decided to say that that image is basically false information. They've just not apologized. To, yeah, they've put out a statement but apologizing saying how that there was an error, which is the first time I've ever seen in Instagram history error. It was a when bit bizarre. That, yeah, when has that ever happened? I've never known Instagram to have an error. The only error is that their app will stop working. But I've never known for, you know, for your content to be flagged as false information. Where was that false information when there was consp- conspiracies for coronavirus and hmm. everything that's going on with the USA election, Trump hmm. and Joe Biden? But false information. Correct. Um, but anyways. Also, um, on that yeah. same topic, we have our incompetent Nigerian army that decided to tweet that everybody everything everybody <laughs> that's everybody everything everyone is saying is false news fake news when if you know dj switch um she's oh, a nigerian yeah, yeah, yeah. dj she, she was, alive. was on instagram people were seeing people die live on instagram and our government our that government mm. decided to say that there was no deaths no casualties initially they were actually trying to say that nothing happened and you know it's very typical of a nigerian government to do such a thing because they're used to what we say is what's the reals what you lot are saying you can say whatever you like but they didn't know we live in a generation so. where no 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 that's one thing i have to say actually the nigerian youth i'm one million ten thousand percent proud of you lot because like yeah us in the diaspora we're trying to push it and help you lot but we are nothing on we you don't lot. know we are nothing on you lot. you guys are going for you lot, there, that, do you know the, the bits that were even so striking there was a after I've even people were dying they were, night, singing they were singing the, singing natu- the national, national anthem, anthem whilst, whilst being was... shot at they were refusing to move because they couldn't even believe what was happening mm. That happens now on the 20th. Today is what? The 23rd? Yeah. It took Buhari, the president of that country, two whole days to come out and speak on this. It's actually taken him two weeks because these protests have been happening for two weeks. 
And mm. in that speech, he said absolutely zero. Mm. He basically said, you international people come into their aid. Face Check your, your facts. Mm. He said, all you lot on social media, stop spreading false news. Mm. And then he only sympathized with the deaths of the policemen and not the deaths of so his innocent cheeky. citizens. That was very cheeky. Do you know how much of a slap in the face that is? That there's some people even who are actually looking and waiting for Bahari to say something and they're feeling hopeless and they're feeling like, oh my gosh, like when is our president going to say something? Then that's what you have to say. That is he, so Do you know what? Cheeky. I think it would even would have been less of an insult if he just went and spat in the face of the protesters. And you know, some people, I remember what we were saying, some people said it was pre-recorded. It yeah, so it was meant to, apparently it was live, but... If it was live, how can you not address the, de- the, the massacre at all? You d- he didn't talk about what happened on the, te- on the 20th of October, by the way. So it probably was pre-recorded then. No, it's either that it mm. was pre-recorded or he doesn't care. Both. Bahari. Mm. Because if you have the initiative to sign off on men, switching off CCTV, switching off electricity, switching off a billboard, so that you think you wouldn't get caught. Are you forgetting that we have phones? Billboards that's never been switched off before. No, literally, everyone was I think shocked. they forgot we have phones. Do you know why? Because this is something that they've been doing for years and years yeah. before social media yeah. came. So they don't know how to deal with So many massacres have media. happened in Nigeria. Did you see the one that tried to sue Jack? <laughs> the CEO Twitter, of the CEO. CEO. Twitter. You are, you, are so, you all right? Are you not embarrassed, man? It's very embarrassing. so embarrassing? A whole no, CEO you're of Twitter. so embarrassing. On the topic of Jack. Because apparently mm. he was promoting violence. Pro- and it'd be funny, if Donald Trump couldn't with even, us. like... Move Jack. Why would why are you <laughs> you uh. uncle or guy? Okay, let's talk about social media actually, and social media into um, activism, yeah. all of this stuff. How do you guys feel about the social media buzz? Can you I be think? honest with you? Uh-huh. Um, I love it. One million. I'm here for it. Period. Um, if you come to visit me on my Twitter. You will not see anything else. What was Beyonce's um, publicist saying? Well, we'll, we'll get there. Yeah, let, we'll get. Yeah, let's. We'll get that one. We'll, we are coming. We are coming. Um, I love the social media, but obviously there's some people saying like, oh, um, because they've now been brought light to Nigeria. Um, like now the way people are now bringing light to other countries mm. is almost like, <sighs> what's the word? They, so they so I've seen some tweets where people are saying like, oh, why are you only talking about it now? Da, 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 da. And it's just like, I'm so sorry, but people who find an issue with everything, are you all right? Clearly not. Is everything okay? Clearly not. Because why would you have an issue with just raising awareness, even if it's something that's been happening for years? And yes, it's sad. Yes, it's heartbreaking. Yes, people are enraged, rightfully so. But are you not happy that they're, they're speaking about it now? Why is never. it that you're finding in like? I also even say that I get it because mm-hmm. I don't get it, but it's like, what? How are you finding an issue with that? I also want to talk to the people that want to go and study researching at uni. Um, you lot that want to be researchers, <laughs> apparently. Oh, I'm, I can't speak on what's going on because, because I need I to need do. To I need to do, do my, my research. research. Oh, I can't help. I can't speak. I don't know what's going. Sorry, PhD students. Sorry, you know? Oga. Did you do research when it was time to post your naked pic? whoa oh <laughs> now i'm asking because when it's time to take their pictures they know what time to post they know mm. when it will pop they mm. didn't do research or when you're one, talking about beyonce BLM. you're talking no, about no, no. nikki even, even come on black lives matter you're you're do your posting but it's nsars you don't want to talk about i don't pers- i'm not saying mean? that you don't you need to speak about everything but don't come here and say you need to do your research especially nigerian celebrities don't come here and don't come and laugh in our faces like, please you need to do your don't research. be silly like what is there to learn there's literally two minutes videos on social media mm-hmm. addressing and everything. you've been on you social media all day you have just say you don't want to talk about it with your chest say you that there's a quote yeah that i really like yeah and it says it's the using africa as an aesthetic but staying silent when it comes to issues in africa for me and that's on period that what leads on to think, Beyonce. Yeah, what do you guys then think of how African Americans are handling the situation? Can because I be, I've seen sorry, a lot I, of to be things. Honest, I don't, I don't can I have something to say really rude, quickly? So actually, <laughs> yeah, man. Let me just say something really quickly. Obviously, with the whole Beyonce. Um, you know, people who are saying, oh, why are people looking to Beyonce? Why mm-hmm. are they waiting for her? Why are they trying to force her to speak? Mm-hmm. You're chatting pure wuss. They tried. No, do you know, I kind of do you know they tried. No, I'm so they sorry. They tried to tear Tiwa Savage down 
for yeah. her I didn't addressing like Beyonce. That's not cool. You're chatting pure was because I'm so sorry. When it's time for Beyonce to use Nigerian culture, Nigerian history, all of that in her music videos where she goes to employ um, well, Nigerian dances her. for her music videos, all that, all that. But then when it's time to speak on Nigerian issues, when it's time to speak on issues in Africa, oh, not everything is done on social media. Not everything is done for show. What does that even mean? Do you, you, know, know, when, you know when they use that, that excuse, oh, not everything is done for show? like your whole I, life is a show that no one what do you mean secondly i'm so sorry does it does it take what, is it, your, what does it take for you to post a quick tweet to even millions even, of your followers funny, even Nicki minaj who's a newborn um a new that's new got mother a newborn, yeah. that's a newborn baby yeah. she literally posted my thoughts and prayers are with those in nigeria who are fighting for injustice and are fighting for their lives Hashtag do you know how many people would have heard from SARS for the first time because, because of what Nicki Minaj, Minaj posted? Yeah. I agree on that front. Like, I'm 50-50 as well. Yeah, I'm 50-50 because I personally think don't make people activists that aren't activists. Like, don't call on... That. You're here screaming, oh, people like... Me, I don't care if me goes address SARS. What, do you know, know what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't... I don't but with the activist part, yeah. Mm-hmm. Just, posting doesn't make you an activist. You're literally just... No, but that's what I was going to say. Mm-hmm. What I was going to say with Beyonce is... With the African culture, with everything, forget you guys are only talking about Black is King. She's been doing it. That's she's what I'm been doing it. Forget Her Black is King. She's at been like VMAs, doing it. um, the music awards, all of that. She's been using and so for me, Nigerian history. Yeah, you can be doing stuff in the background. I'm not asking you to be an activist. All I'm asking you is to retweet NSARS. All I'm asking you is to retweet the resources that everybody is sharing. Two million of your followers. That's all you need to do and open your purse too. Because you know your purse is heavy. You, period. And it. obviously her publicist must have said that, oh, you know, they're working behind the scenes, you don't to put everything on social media don't get it twisted i hear it to a certain extent because if you're doing work behind closed doors thank you do you know what i mean but at the same time let's not go and now like literally what we've been saying let's not underestimate what social media can do you use our continent to make money beyonce doesn't even have to so speak up even she could have just retweeting, retweeting alone or reposting something alone. I don't think she could have gone to Tiwa Savage page. Um, she could have gone on Burner Boy. She could have gone just to even comment, Whiz Kid, even retweet. comment or even comments or say something underneath those videos. Like we're with you. We like obviously, you. I get the whole argument looking to influencers and whatnot to be activists, but Beyonce in particular, with her history that she has with adopting, um, you know nigerian culture for her aesthetic for her music specifically nigerian for her, too. yeah for her performances for her life performances her too. Publicism you can go back cheeky. years and find when you know when she was pregnant with her i don't know if it was with her twins her or with twins. blue mm. she emulated a nigerian, a nigerian goddess. goddess of twins uh-huh so what do you mean you don't you you don't want to say even something spoke Yoruba and black is king are you all right Right, you know how a publicist said that um, obviously not everything's on social media. So why did why did Beyonce post for Black Lives Matter then? Since social media is not that. People say they pressured her to do that one too, though. So listen, we're not saying these celebrities have the answers. We're no, because they don't. They don't even know half of it. Obviously, they don't there's, there's there, some that. people who are looking to these celebrities for that to, for to be their voice, to be their god. That no, one, that's not that's what, what we want. For. Yeah. No. We're we just need about it raising to spread, awareness. Literally, awareness to people that might not know. For me, to so be how honest, many people Beyonce can actually speak to? Yeah, get. for me, sometimes silence is actually good. Like for instance, I'm not really a fan of what Anthony, Anthony Joshua said, but <laughs> I would have preferred he just see, ret- you see retweeted Joshua, something. Yeah. <laughs> All he had to do was repost a video, repost a hmm. tweet. Even even you know it. the YouTuber Shirley B. Oh my god! Do you know when I saw that one? I thought, sis, you one, you didn't read the Wait, room. Wait, what did Shirley two, B do again? She said that you're ruining the workplace or what? Mm-hmm. Yeah, she basically said, "Oh, guys, if you're not, if you don't have anything to do outside, stay in your houses. Don't go and protest. Like, what you, people need to you, work. Yeah, if you know what, if you know what protesting is going to do, then why are you going out there to protest? Like, stay in your houses." And then someone was like, someone literally ripped her to shreds, and she responded instead of saying "end sar," she put "end cyberbullying." It's just telling of certain things. When you have money and privilege in Nigeria, sometimes it goes to your head. Do you know why I didn't know that she moved tonight? Like she yeah, lives in been Nigeria. There for yeah, I minute. told me the other day. Mm-hmm. Oh wow! And that's what you have to say. Mm. Because you, you even live in, there. You even nice, seen it first. Because you live in nice house. And you you probably money. aren't even seen it because you're rich. It's only the poor that see what they're going through. That was really community. tasteless. Very tasteless. Honestly, shout out to all the Nigerian celebrities that have been putting in work. Fouls. Fouls. I love you. you. You're my husband. DJ <laughs> Switch. Like DJ said. Switch, Tiwa Savage, all of you. Like, and shout out to people that are not know. necessarily celebs. FK. Yeah. What is it? The Feminist. And the Feminist Coalition. Mm-hmm. Mm. You lot. 
Hmm. I stand. Phenomenal scenes. And I stand because not only are you doing what the government has failed to do for years, but you're being so sick with it. Hmm. Donations, you're showing us beautiful breakdowns of how you're using the money. You're just doing phenomenal things. And it's FK, is Mo, Feminist Coalition, period. Mm. I stand. Like For I real. like all the God donations, bless you, honestly. Everything. God bless they've, you. They've lot. been the one handling like the protesters, um, medical bills, medical bills, lawyer bills. Phenomenal. When and there's a whole there's, government, when there's out a whole there, government, hmm. imagine oh, if there's oh, there's my, there may be people watching thinking, oh, how can I help? We're gonna have links in the description yeah. Yeah, box, yeah, yeah, all yeah, of yeah, that yeah, good yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. And for those who want to educate themselves also, we'll put in stuff on what you can read up on and just... Yeah. Not just about the NSARS movement, but everything going on in yeah. Africa Because well. Ashley is now going to and educate us. And the Caribbean before. as well. Yeah. There's, There's so, so many, many things. things. Yeah. Just go to the description. We're going to put everything. So just quickly also um, to touch oh, yeah. upon what's happening in Congo. Because Cong obviously yeah. I have a responsibility. I'm Congolese. So mm -hmm. it wouldn't make sense for me to not mm -hmm. speak mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. it. She has to. So just quickly, just to... Um, Sum it up. Yeah, to sum it up. Um, there is a genocide. A holocaust. Holo holocaust taking place in Congo. Over the last 20 years, there have been over 16 million deaths. No, te over 10 million deaths and counting. So 10 million is even the estimate. Apparently that number is small in comparison to how many wow. people have actually died. And it isn't just women, it's women, it's men, it's children. And that's all because they're... Congo is the world's largest reserve for a mineral called coltan. And coltan is basically um, a mineral that is used to make phones and it's used for aerospace and it's used for the Jet innovation engines. of technology. So all of this stuff that you see here, these microphones, our phones, um, iPads, just everything. Without, and it's only, so without it's only Congo? found in Congo? Yeah, it's the, Congo? it's the largest reserve. Okay. So basically, without Congo, you wouldn't have. I like the hashtag No Congo No Phone. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so women, children under ten, and men are being tortured, killed, raped, um, <sighs> and they're being enslaved just yeah. to retrieve the this Congo. mineral. Mm -hmm. I mean the coltan. Mm -hmm. The coltan, yeah. Um, and other minerals. Yeah. I need to tell you guys something. Sorry, Ash. Congo. We if you want to look at it in terms of. Um, resources. Congo should be one of the richest countries in the whole Absolutely. world. Do you know, period. Someone did a but calculation. Congo is literally one of the poorest countries one in the world. One of the poorest, yep. Yeah. Um, someone wow. did a calculation and with all our min minerals, we're sitting on $24 trillion worth of minerals. Are we seeing that money? No. Mm. no. Um, mm. There's 48 women being raped every hour. I heard that statistic. And 48 like, women every hour. So as we're speaking, there's women being raped. Um, and obviously there's some people thinking oh well how did this start like what's going on mm -hmm. essentially the, the faces behind the genocide is obviously the president that was reigning for 18 years from 2001 to 2019 Kabila 2001 um, to 2019 where do you hear that how are you so self Yo, that's greed <laughs> do you know why even, are you so power hungry when I say it it's embarrassing 2001 to 2019 he was put actually into, he was put into presidency 10 i think either 10 or 19 days after his dad was assassinated his dad was presidency so imagine there was no election nothing he was just immediately elected Jesus and put in power um and essentially there's countries That's like 19 years hmm, countries like usa france and the uk um they're basically providing financial aid and they've basically signed deals and contracts for countries to invade mm. and take this mineral. Wow. Um, so what do you think the government are getting from this? They're probably like paying them or giving them... Yeah, like, they have if you to. look at like, just not even just Congo, if you look at the history of Africa, whenever we sign deals, we get the short end of the stick. Always. And I don't know wow. what it is about our politicians where they feel like, you know what, let's just hand this, let's just sign this so that for short-term pleasures, basically. Mm. Whether it's money, whether it's power, because mm. they know their families will be good. Their families won't be touched. Mm. They're secure, everything. And in, ex in exchange, crazy. it's the, the, they basically exchange the peace of our, of our countries. Mm. They exchange civilians. Mm. They exchange basically for these people to have power hmm. and it's like when i see like i was looking that someone put together a, a little presentation that you you reposted it even what's basically happening mm. in congo and the way the extent as to which the children and the women and the men are being tortured mm. 
it's almost like slavery hasn't ended. Never wow. ended. Yeah, it, it, it's never ended in Congo. It's been they just put a different on. outfit on it. It's and been happening. when I saw um, Hillary Clinton, when she did that tweet, oh, you know, I'm calling for Buhari to step in and end this, you know, what's going oh, on? Oh, she said that. In okay. Nigeria. I thought, you it's twat. Very, it's very rich. Hmm. I thought, you. you actual twat. Are you serious? Your husband signed a deal to receive $650,000 just to keep an oppressive president in power. Wow. How dare you open your dirty lips? How dare you open your mouth to say, oh, Bahari, please face your front. Worry about your paedophile of a husband. Wow. We don't want to hear you. Wow. How dare you? Tony Blair, a former prime minister of the UK, someone else who signed the deal so that Kabila could stay in power and that, you know, countries could benefit from the mineral um, Colton. And you know what's so the sad? The greed. Hmm. This has been going on for years. And obviously I'm happy that, you know, it's been brought to other people's mm. attention because this is, this is, it's different. Like you, the situation in Congo is different. It's not something that it's like we can protest for. This is just, it's, it's ingrained in our history. Mm. It's been like this, even from King Leopold, um, he was a complete and absolute ru- ruler of Congo. Mm. This was in the 1980s. Mm. And since then till now, and I don't know, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it will take for Congo to change or for the situation to be. I I don't know. I honestly couldn't tell you. I couldn't. And I remember bringing it up to my mum, and I said, "Oh, mum, you know people are raising awareness." And honestly, her response, she yeah. was she was literally like, "Ashley, what do you want me to say?" Because it's it's sad. Like, sorry, the condition of Africa right now, not even Disgusting. just Congo. And I'm just thinking, well, my I, like my prayer is that future generations get to see Africa in a better oh, state. Because they Africa, don't deserve it. Africa isn't just poverty. It's not just there you was know, a good all quote. of these things. Sorry, babe. There was a I good think quote. I know what quote you're going to say. Africa is not underdeveloped. Mm. It's overexploited. Exploited. Completely. And mm. listening to Ashley is making me emotional too because it's like, listen, yeah. There's so many places we could start hmm. because it's like, okay, the question is, how did this, beca- how did Africa become what it is today? Mm. I'm not going to sit here and say there's one answer because there's so many answers to that question. Like, I don't like when people say there's only one, it's not only colonialism that's left Africa like this. Colonialism had a big fat hand in why Africa is the way it is mm-hmm. right now. Of course, we're not dismissing that. But before colonial people, masters came to that country, rulers of the countries were greedy too. Yeah. Greedy. it's a human isn't that how slavery really it's a human yes yep. it's a human problem and what is very saddening is because obviously as christians and you'll see christians on social media will be saying stuff like pray about it but you know what the craziest part is guys the joke the people that are in power allowing these things to be signed allowing these things to happen are christians or, they Muslims, also, or, they're or religious they're, they're all religion. they're all people of faith of religion and that's so what they claim. That's the bit that leaves me so hopeless because I'm the type of person to probably tweet something like "Pray for yeah. Africa." I haven't tweeted that. This Not time. once. I've never tweeted that. Do you know why I haven't tweeted it? We've been praying. Our parents have been praying. Our grandparents have been praying. We've. It's for, for me. It's not that I don't believe in prayer. I don't want to come here and it say has nothing. Do you know what I mean? It's that. not that. But I'm sick and tired of that rhetoric. Mm-hmm. And it's almost saying that it's almost like a cop out. It's like, oh, guys, pray that it'll, and it'll go but away. When will people, there are people losing their lives. The Bible says faith without works is dead. Where's the works? When where, our own leaders where, are greedy, useless. They won't let anybody worthless. else take position because they don't want to loosen their grip. Do you know what the craziest years. part about hmm. being a politician in Africa is? You know what you're signing up for when you get in there. Absolutely. If you've heard how many times in Nigeria billions of my, of naira has been all of a sudden just disappeared. Oh like, yeah, they said out of one nowhere. time a snake or something did this. A snake. They'll ate come up with one random story hmm. or this much. Even I don't want to divert from it the tragedies bloody. happening in Africa right now. But an, a good example for you to understand, man, because this has gone viral recently. People found supplies that were meant for COVID. Oh my god! That in was warehouses. Morning. That was this morning untouched these are things that whoever was Trust storing that. it they wouldn't be able to finish it in one year not even what in two years what are they storing years. it for Why are they not apparently they want to go and sell it again oh my god what what kind of that is the perfect example of but what africa looks like this is the, what the I people mean. at the top hold on to things 
and they they what's it called they they divide it out in dribs and drabs our roads i'm sorry i, I need to say something here yeah? we just celebrated independence at can you the, imagine? At, on the first of october can you 2020 imagine? Can you imagine? Okay. right before all of this happened started and there were so many nigerians that didn't want to celebrate independence and to be fair in the diaspora we think we know what we're doing i can't even lie we were here doing party party and now oh, that all of this stuff is happening, no, nah, I really understand why they didn't want to celebrate. Absolutely. What do we have to show for 60 years? Nothing. You come to Nigeria, especially Lagos, you see that airport. What's it? What is that? That airport. Do you know I'm like so that glad that you even touched You see on. roads. What is that? You see roads. You see police station. What is that? I'm so glad you touched on the whole Indian. What is that? It's a joke. Healthcare, education. What is it? Our governments Yo, are a joke. Guys, everyone here, we're all graduates. Like, we've gone to university, us three, we, you know, we've studied. <laughs> Guys, why why should that be a privilege? <laughs> why should basic water, guys, lights, guys, undergraduate healthcare. students, students at Lagos in Lagos right now, students in Africa right now, they don't even have light to read their books properly so they can graduate. They then finish uni, they go through all that struggle, they then finish and they can't even get a job. Do you know what the craziest part is, guys? Oh. God is on the throne. It's okay. Um. Do you know what's the craziest part, guys? You know when you grow up in a country like this, you can become very desensitized. Yeah. So I want I want to make something very because you're not seeing it for a lot of you listening. A lot of us, yeah, when we was in sixth form, college, that's like 16, 17 years old, mm-hmm. right? We were able to say, "Oh, I want a part time job. Oh, I'm just gonna go and apply for Tesco, Imagine. which is a super su- supermarket. Imagine. Oh, I'm just gonna apply for Halfords." Mm-hmm. In Nigeria, do you, do you think people can just have? You think people are just having... Just like that. Oh, I just want to apply for... I just want to... What does that even mean? To even go just to school. Just want to apply for... Like, we've, it's become the norm in our countries for you to have to leave the country. Or you have to be the daughter or son of somebody wealthy Yeah. to have a life that's worth living. As I said in the beginning, people are surviving, they're not living. People have become so accustomed to the narrative <clears throat> that, oh, I need a visa... I need a, a different passport to this passport that I currently hold because this passport mm. is not doing anything for me. Mm. And that's terrible. Think about it. The Nigerian passport has it's lo- it's lost its respect. It's lost its meaning. Mm. It doesn't mean anything. That's why I'm even so glad that you brought up the fact that there were Nigerians who were, you know, annoyed that celebrate at you guys here yeah. celebrating it because that's the same thing with Congo there were so many mom, there, there were so I many people shocked. back home in Congo that were looking at us like why like obviously Congo trended on mm-hmm. Independence Day they were looking at us like what what are you what are you guys actually celebrating zero mama I the remember- president that was president that was in place for 19 years even though he's not the official president he's still there behind the scenes hmm. what are we celebrating zero 48 that's women the- are being raped every hour what are we celebrating what's wow. there to be happy about what is there First to celebrate? Of October every year. I have to look at my <coughs> mom like, Mom, it's Independence Day. You know, she looks at me like, Tell me, you don't have know. Have my anything. parents ever been excited for Independence Day? You know that my mom has, she's never, for the past few years, I think even, I don't think I've ever seen her like put it on her WhatsApp states or anything. Like, you know, the when it's their birthday, they go up. all like, blah, blah, blah. They've given I've never up. seen them post like, Oh, happy Independence Day. And guess what? It's not as it. if they don't want to be proud. It's not as if they don't want to claim it. It's just an embarrassment. We don't have independence. We don't have, in- we what don't. are we celebrating? It's decoration. If we truly had in, if we truly had independence, yeah, should our country look like that? That's a great. I'm question. not even but attributing you know, it to the Western because the Western. Oh, I'm talking about the Western world, yeah, and these sanctions and petitions and stuff, right? The bit I agree with is that they should probably put a little ban on people coming here and coming to America, like all those politicians. They should probably freeze it for a bit and let them see what it's like. To not be able to escape Nigeria That's for a hot minute. Possible. No, it's definitely possible. Why would they do that? They can do it. They can't. But I'm okay, saying they want to you'd have, that's what the san- that sanction was to not allow them to free freely move from Nigeria here. Right. And also free some of their what assets and the stuff reason? like that. To let them see what it's like. I ag- I don't know. I agree with uh, that in a way. But the stuff I don't agree with is getting the Western world to help. What are they going to help mm, us with? With the petitions and stuff. What are they going to... What are they not the reason that our country is... What are they going to... What... Are, if you... There's a... There's an article that I saw. Sorry, I'll leave it down below, yeah. About why sanctions are not good. And it was basically just evidence as to when sanctions have been introduced in a lot of third world countries, it has led to greater poverty for the citizens. Because when you let somebody come in that doesn't really care about the people as well... What are they going to do? Guys, I'm so sorry. Do you know what I find so cheeky about all of this, yeah? The government back home, yeah? The fact that the president is 
literally, you know, as a president, it's your country. Like, you're meant to be proving to everyone your good works and stuff. Why are your children going to uni abroad? Why can't you use them as an example of the good system in the country and keep them there? Because they know. You, don't you have no they shame. They're even posing with them with their graduation pictures. University of Surrey posing with them because they've gone abroad. You are shameless. You're absolutely, sh- you have no shame in the world. They say Nigerians have shame. What shame? You're shameless. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Like your child, you were flying your child. Like your child could be ill right now. God forbid one of their kids could have COVID. They're flying them straight here for healthcare. But back home, you can't they know. They know your country's in ruins, so why are they going to keep their children there when they know? So do something and you know about so, it. Do you know what's so mad as well? Yeah, when you look at our leaders, Congo, Nigeria, wherever, because obviously there's issues happening in so many places in Africa right oh, now. Oh, black people have suffered. If man. you look at our leaders, they're so old. <laughs> that one and as well. you know what's so cheeky? <laughs> is the fact that, like, I'm sorry to say, but they're not going to be here in a couple of years. Who The laws that they're putting in place, the deals that they're signing, X, Y, Z, their greediness is not going to affect them. Because they're going soon. It's affecting us, the young people. Guys, the minister of um, youth or something in Nigeria is 56 years old. How? What are you ministering? Did you see the ambassador to the US? Yeah, it's 80 something, 80 something, something years you old. You know someone responded and said, is this not a corpse? No, but honestly though. <laughs> yeah, no, that, was, that was wild. You've, you've lived your life. Like, it's your... But that's how it happens in Nigeria. Like they've probably even set up who's next to get go become the yeah, president. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Do you, I mean, all of this stuff it's is not, very. It's not the people's vote. I need you guys to know poverty in a lot of African countries is very intentional. It keeps us at a place that lets everybody else control us mm-hmm. except let's, ourselves. Let, it helps keep mm-hmm. the rich rich and the poor poorer. That's. Do you think you think we don't have the resources to be the Wakanda we saw in Black Panther? <laughs> why? Why? Apparently, that's what makes the world go round. So, guys, <sighs> as listeners of the podcast, we would love to hear what you have to say. Yeah. Please leave your comments down below. We don't really have anything. Solutions, we've left them in the... Because for me, I'm tired. Mm-hmm. To talk, you can't tell. We're, for we're me to really come here and talk to you about solutions, I don't know what you want me to say. Yeah, because right. I... All I know is that we can't stop talking because in Nigeria right now, Buhari is trying to silence his youth um, and we won't allow that to happen as the people in the diaspora. Mm. So in Congo, we've been protesting this for years and years the and years. One with, the thing is, with Congo, it's actually very, very upsetting because mm. you guys is one it's been it's generations just, that's, that's just what congo is now essentially yeah. like at this point mm-hmm. i don't i don't mean it like Obviously, that that's but not what you know makes what I'm congo. congo is a beautiful country beautiful now, country but as in that's it's just been what's that word it's been, been stripped yeah. and stripped and stripped beyond repair that it's like people don't even talk about congo that much anymore yeah that's sad that's it i don't have anything to say i don't so have, no. we don't have solutions for you we just wanted to let you know we are very well aware of what's going on mm-hmm. and we also want you to be aware about it. And we, we had to say something. Yeah. Because you know what? We were never going to just wait and just let it pass by and not have anything to say. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you have anything you want to tr- contribute to the conversation, please leave it down below. Share your thoughts on Twitter. At us. DM us. <laughs> Africa is bleeding. That's the title of this podcast. Africa is bleeding. Yeah. End SARS. End bad governance in Africa, period. Mm-hmm. And Africans, youth specifically, let's remain united. Yeah. Let's not we allow them to, to because they're even trying to separate us in Nige and do tribalism. They're not looking at you as to whether you're Ibo, Hausa, Yoruba. Fulani, Yoruba, before they shoot you. They're not looking at that when they don't give you light. Hmm. So don't allow that to be what is distracting you today. Don't let anything divide you. Don't let anything... Oh, When you can't go to the hospital, they're not looking if you're Yoruba or Ibo or whatever it is. Hmm. They don't care. We need to be united now more than ever. And I'm I'm glad that a lot of people are now seeing that. That all this, oh, you know, Congo verse, Nigeria verse, blah, 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 blah. It's it's bull. Hmm. We have more important issues at hand. One million percent. And if... Me personally, I want to be proud of where I come from. I want to go to like I I'm still obviously I'm still very patriotic. I think it's just ingrained in Africans to be mad patriotic. Yeah. But like I want to have something to show for where I come from. 
I still have hope. Yeah, same. I, I believe there's a difference now because one thing that's different now is obviously the youths are standing up and mm. the youths, if you know anything about African culture, standing up to elders ain't a thing. Standing up to authority was that. <laughs> but we're doing it. Right now it. we're done. We're yep. tired. We're, we're sick and tired. You know, people are tired for real. Our parents' generation is not us. Do you know what's so mad? Period. I think I told you, Aya, the other day. My mum and my auntie, they were discussing. When I came back from the protest, they literally looked at me. Do you know what they said, actually? They apologised, like, we're so sorry our generation couldn't do this. Because if we had done it, you wouldn't be in this situation, you guys. It would be different. So whatever we're fighting for right now, whatever the youth are fighting for right now, we're fighting for the next generation. For our children and their children's children. We're not going to suffer in silence anymore. Yeah. So that's it, guys. Mm -hmm. Thank you for listening. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. We love you all very much. (laughs) This has been a long one. Peace and love, always. Eddie... Africans do everything. We do. Here we is. We'll see you on our next um, topic. Bye. Bye. Bye.